Hi, and welcome to another video on UiPath with me, Jeppe. In this one, we're taking a look at the Generate HTML Content activity. This is a new activity that I just discovered recently, and I want to give you a quick demo of it. Before we get started, please hover over the red watermark in the bottom right of the video and subscribe to my channel. And also at the end of the video, if you liked it, give it a like. And if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. So let's get to it. All right, so we're inside Studio in a blank project. And we have this new activity called create HTML content. And what you can do with it is you can, yeah, well, create HTML content. For example, if you're sending out an email and today we're going to try to create an invitation for a party that we're having and see how that goes. So I added the activity to our sequence here. And what we can see is that there are basically two options here. We can click a button or we can fill out this, uh, this field down here. And this property down here is where we put the name of the variable to which we want to store the HTML content that we generate. So I'll just click and hit control K and I'll just call it my HTML. And that way we can see if we click on the variables pane that now we have a new variable called my HTML and that is of data type string. The next thing we can do is we can simply open this editor and this looks like, you know, WordPad from back in the nineties or something like that. It's a very simple text editor, but you can do some basic formatting of text. So let's try and do that. And of course, this we could have done in a simple text email, but we want to add some formatting to it. So just to be a little bit crazy, we're going to add some coloring to some of these letters right here. And also we'll put the word please in bold, just because we really want people to show up to this party. So if I click save now, what will happen is it'll just generate HTML to display text in the format that we just built inside the editor. And the best way of sort of visualizing this or the easiest way is to simply write a text file with that content in it. So we will add the my HTML content to the text file and the text file will store in this folder on my desktop called HTML files. And we'll simply put that in here. And we will call the file invitation.html. There we go. So as we can see, this folder is empty. And if I run my automation now, with a little luck, we go into the folder. And now we can see that there's an invitation file in here. And we open that and we can see, please come to my party with the coloring and the formatting intact. So what else can we do? Well, let's go back into Studio. Inside the editor, we want to add an RSVP date. So the date by which people should respond whether or not they're coming. And we want that date to be 30 days from now. So how do we do that? Well, out here in our main workflow, we want to generate that date. So we'll create a new variable of type system date time. And the default value for that date time will be now, and then we'll add 30 days to the current date. So that'll generate a date 30 days from now and store it inside this response date variable. So inside our editor, what we can do up here is we can add data values. And the first thing we want to do is we want to map a data value and then add it afterwards. So we'll map a data value and the type of data value that we want to add is a single value. And the single value, we can just say this is the RSVP date. This is the name that this value will have inside of the HTML editor. And this over here is the value that we want to put into that placeholder. So that would be our response date. And we want to format that to a short date string like that. So now we have this RSVP date that we can add to our HTML content. So I click OK. And now instead of just being able to map a data value, I can now add the data value. So I want to be right here after the word by, and then I want to add this RSVP date value. And you can see that it adds this sort of placeholder to our, our content. Now, if I now save and run the automation again, it should finish quickly and we go to the folder and open the invitation again. 
we can see that it says, please RSVP by July 8th in this case. So that's a way of adding some dynamic data into the HTML content. Now we can go one step further because we have this file. I'll just paste it in. And this is just an Excel sheet with the names of some local hotels. So these are some options that people going to the party can choose from so that they know where to stay at night. So we want to add these to our invitation. So we go into uh, Studio again. And the first thing we want to do in here is we want to read that Excel file. So we will get a read range activity. And the workbook we want to read is, of course, this one. So we'll copy this path again, paste it into the activity. And of course, the full name needs to be there. And we'll read the first sheet, which is just called sheet one. And we will delete this range because we want to try to read the entire sheet. Whatever it reads in this sheet, we want to store in a data table. And we'll call that DT Hotels. And we can see here that that created a new data table variable called DT Hotels. Now, if we go into the editor, we can do the same as we did when adding the response date. So we'll just type in here list of nearby hotels. And then we'll want to map the data value first. And now we want to add a value of type table and we'll call it nearby hotels. And what we want to put into that uh, sort of object is, of course, the content of the DT hotels data table. So once we've done that, we can place the cursor where we want to insert the table. And then we can say that now we want to add the nearby hotels table. Now, if we save this, and then just correct one little thing I forgot in the read range uh, activity is that we do not want to add headers to the data table that we're loading. So if I run the file again, it finishes very quickly. And we go to the folder, open the invitation, and we can see that now it added this table of nearby hotels. So this was just a very simple demo of how you can use the generate HTML content activity. And in this case, I just created a file on my local drive, but you can insert the HTML using that variable, typically into an email that you're generating and building and sending and stuff like that. So I hope you liked the video. If you did, give it a like. And uh, don't forget to come back for more videos. And you can do that by subscribing to my channel. So thanks for watching. Hopefully I'll see you in the next one. Stay safe.